Lord, they'll talk good about the Lord. You talk good about the pastor, they'll talk good about the pastor. What you can't do is you can't forget where you were when God found you. Oh, we're, we're directed by Scripture. Deuteronomy 6 and 4 says what? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. But then it goes on to say, I want you to hang these Scriptures between your eyeballs and I want you to nail them to the post of your door. It's called the Shema. You can look it up. And he said, and when your kids ask you, what do we do that for? You tell them we was in Egypt. And we were slaves. And we were prisoners. And we were afflicted. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. We were oppressed. We were nobody. But the Lord. I said, but the Lord brought us out with His mighty hand. Oh, God have mercy if we forgot about what the Lord has done for us. God have mercy on Remind us. Remind us, oh Lord. Tell them what the Lord has done good. Tell them what the Lord means to you. But more than that, show them what God means to you. She doesn't understand how David could act this way. There's no thought, Brother Billy, no thought to the importance of the occasion. What does that tell us about Saul? It tells us that Saul ain't been telling Michael about the Ark of the Covenant. Saul ain't been telling Michael if we just get the glory of the Lord back here. You think we're doing good now? You wait till the Ark shows up. Oh, you remember they carried the ark all through the wilderness. The ark set in the tabernacle in the Holy of Holies. It's the mercy seat. It's the power of God. Oh, baby, you just wait. You think we're doing good now? You wait till the presence of the Lord gets here. She didn't even recognize. She was more consumed and more concerned with how her kingly husband was letting her down by acting fool than she was that the presence of the Lord. Let me tell you something. There ain't nothing ever going to happen. I don't care where you're going to eat. I don't care what brand your clothes are. I don't care who's sitting next to you. I don't care what you drove up, parked out on the parking lot. There is nothing in this world more important than Jesus showing up in your life. I want you to understand something. That it doesn't appear that this is a premedicated or choreographed act by David. He's just overwhelmed with joy and excitement. The promises of God are coming to pass. It started, Sister Marie, it started in Jesse's front yard. Oh, somebody hear me right now. And the anointing of the Lord was upon him. He was anointed the next king of Israel. But there's strong evidence. We don't know exactly, Brother Chris, but there's strong evidence that 14 or 15 years pass before David is elevated to king. Mama, he spent time in caves. He spent time running and fighting for his life. Saul tried to kill him. He had to act, he had to fake like he went crazy to keep the Philistines from killing him. Read it in the, read it in the Bible. He got with the Philistines and then they decided... We remember him. So he, so he made out like he was mad. He slobbered all over the place and, and acted like a wild man. He's, he's been on the run. He's been, you, think about it. Even Michael had to, had to put a dummy in the bed and let him down. They tried to kill him. They, on more than one occasion, they tried to kill him. They got everybody in the whole country after him. But all that's passed. And the fulfillment of the promises are on the priest of the shoulders coming right behind him. He's just dancing because God kept his word. He's just dancing because God didn't let him down. He's just dancing because through all the storms and all the nights of being cold and hungry and, and in one particular place he was hid up in the cave where Saul and his men were. And he saw how sumptuously and, and how blessed that they were, Brother Pete. And he was a vagabond on the run. Do you know one time they were so hungry that they had to go into the tabernacle and eat the shoe bread that the priest was supposed to eat? One time he didn't have nothing to fight with. 
But he went to the tabernacle and got the sword of Goliath. But now, the glory of the Lord is returning. The power of the Lord is once again being manifest. The promises of God are coming to pass. The presence and favor of God are upon them again. And the ark was brought to the place that was prepared for it. Burnt offerings and peace offerings were offered before the Lord.
even our most Oh, 
home. He had to get out of home, so he had to get out there and get his praise on to the end. David can respond in three ways. He can say, oh, baby, I'm so sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. I was dead. I, I, I knew I should have had that. Lord, well, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if you did. I'm not sorry that you told me this is so true. I had a lot of fire. I gave her a few of them in the And I was not just tired. I was not going to be right now. I'm sorry. I just got caught up in the moment. I want you to forgive me. Or he could have done what most normally we do. Get mad.
That they were so excited, they were so overwhelmed, they were so enthusiastic about that one belt truck. Driving it all out there through the, the presses and stuff. Come on down there. Just overflowing. Thank you. 